In this topic, we're going to discuss tissue fluid and lymph. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is tissue fluid? How is tissue fluid formed? What is lymph? What are lymph nodes? And how is lymph moved along? So what is tissue fluid? Well, the blood supplies nutrients to the tissues of the body via tiny vessels called capillaries. Now they cannot serve every single cell. So the nutrients need to get to these cells in a liquid that bathes the tissues, and this is called tissue fluid. So here you can see a capillary running between the different cells. Tissue fluid is formed from the plasma of the blood. It's a very watery liquid which contains glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, salts and oxygen, all of which it supplies to the tissues. In return, it receives carbon dioxide and other waste materials from the tissues. So tissue fluid is blood plasma without plasma proteins. So how is tissue fluid formed? Well, blood pumped by the heart passes along the arteries, then into narrower arterioles and then finally into capillaries. So this creates a pressure called the hydrostatic pressure at the arterial end of the capillary. So this tends to force the liquid out of the blood. The outward pressure is going to be opposed by two other forces. You've got the hydrostatic pressure of the tissue fluid outside the capillaries. This prevents outward movement of the liquid and then you've also got lower water potential of the blood due to the plasma proteins that pulls water back into the capillaries. Now the combined effect of all these forces is to create an overall pressure of about 1.7 kilopascals that pushes tissue fluid out of the capillaries. This pressure is only enough to, for, uh, uh, to force small molecules out of the capillaries leaving all cells and proteins in the blood in the capillaries. So this type of filtration under pressure is called ultrafiltration. As tissue fluid is lost, the pressure in the capillaries reduces. So which way do you think tissue fluid will move when it reaches the venous end of the network? Well, it's going to move back into the blood. This is because the hydrostatic pressure is less inside the capillary compared to the tissue fluid outside it. The fluid returning to the capillary has lost much of its oxygen and nutrients by diffusion to the cells that it bathed. Can you think of what this tissue fluid has now gained in return? Well, it will be carrying carbon dioxide and excretory products. Let's go through this diagram. On the left, the blood is arriving at the capillary from the arteriole. So it's under a higher hydrostatic pressure compared to the small osmotic pressure outside. This means at the arterial end of the capillary, the tissue fluid flows out of the capillary. Can you calculate the difference in pressure? Well, it's about 10 millimeters Hg. Then as the blood flows towards the venule end of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure is reducing. So the osmotic pressure outside the capillary is going to be higher. The tissue fluid is thus going to flow into the capillary. So here's quite a nice diagram to summarize what I've just said. Now tissue fluid forms the environment around each cell. Exchange occurs through the tissue fluid between the blood and the cells and the internal environment must be kept constant, especially tissue fluid components, for example glucose, temperature, pH and water and we call this homeostasis.
Right, let's move on to lymph. What is lymph? Lymph is a milky liquid made up of material from three sources. You've got tissue fluid that has not been reabsorbed at the venous end of the capillary network. Fatty substances which have been absorbed in the ileum. And lymphocytes which are stored in lymph nodes. Lymph is carried in the lymphatic system, which is made up of capillaries, which kind of resemble blood capillaries. These merge into larger vessels that form a network around the body. The lymph vessels drain their contents back into the bloodstream, and they join at a vein called the subclavian vein, which sits just under your collarbone. So this is where the lymph is returned to the blood. Now, lymph vessels are similar to veins because they've got valves that ensure one-way flow. At points along the lymph, vessels form lymph nodes. These store lymphocytes. So as lymph passes through these nodes, lymphocytes and proteins are added to it, and lymph nodes filter the blood, so they filter out any bacteria or foreign material, and these are then engulfed by phagocytes. So the lymphocytes inside them help protect the body against disease. So have you ever felt your lymph nodes when you've been sick, they feel a bit swollen? Now, how's lymph moved along? Well, it can be moved along in the vessels in three ways. The first is hydrostatic pressure of the tissue fluid leaving the capillaries. The second is the contraction of body muscles. These squeeze the lymph vessels, and the valves inside the vessels ensure that the fluid inside them moves in one direction, towards the heart. Enlargement of the thorax during breathing in. If you take a deep breath in, can you feel your chest expanding? So this reduces the pressure in the thorax and it draws the lymph into that region towards the heart. Here's a nice diagram to show you the relationship between the blood plasma, tissue fluid and lymph. So blood plasma is forced out of the capillaries into the surrounding tissues. It now forms tissue fluid, and we call this ultrafiltration. Towards the venual end of the capillary, the tissue fluid returns to the blood plasma. This is called reabsorption. And then excess tissue fluid is drained into the lymph, which gets carried in the lymph vessels back to the blood plasma. So remember that it enters the bloodstream in the subclavian vein. Right, in summary, what have we looked at in this topic? Well, we discussed tissue fluid. Can you remember what tissue fluid is? It's made from the blood plasma. It's a very watery liquid that contains glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, salts, and oxygen. So it's how materials are exchanged between the tissues and blood in the capillaries. How is tissue fluid formed? Remember that there are different pressures involved in forming tissue fluid. So at the arterial end of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure is higher, so the plasma is forced out of the cells. And at the venual end, the osmotic pressure is higher than the hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries, so tissue fluid moves back into the capillaries. What is lymph? Lymph is a milky white substance formed from tissue fluid, fatty substances and lymphocytes. It flows in the lymphatic system. Lymph nodes store lymphocytes and they filter the blood. And then finally, can you remember the three ways that lymph is moved along? Well, the hydrostatic pressure, 
contraction of the body muscles and enlargement of the thorax during breathing in. And that concludes our lesson, the end.